the Joe Rogan experience. Tax exempt status. Tax exempt status for religions. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, one. Because really. otherwise, why can't I start a religion right now and get tax exempt status? Why can't you? You tell me Scientology can do it. How many people makes a religion? Do you have a number? Tell, give me your number. Tell me what your numbers are. Can, uh, what? How do you know whether or not someone's legit? How do you decide? No one should be tax exempt, especially someone who's taking in shit fucking ton piles of money. If you're some sort of church or whatever, and you're getting donations in the millions and millions of dollars, and you're like one of them Benny Hinn assholes out there driving a Bentley, Amazon Inc. paid zero federal taxes in 2017, gets 789 million windfall from new tax law. They paid zero? Yeah, so like... How's well, that work? Yeah, that kind of shit shouldn't happen either. That shouldn't happen either. But the idea is that a corporation... Now, this is not my idea, so don't think I'm supporting this. I have to preface this, but the idea is that corporations shouldn't pay taxes because all the individuals who are making money in that corporation already pay taxes. This is the argument that I've heard, and that made me go, oh, okay, and the argument was why, it might have been Peter Schiff, did he say that to me? I don't know. I don't think it was on the air. It might not have been him. Shit. Anyway, uh, sidetrack. The idea is that a corporation is not an individual, so why should it pay taxes? It's not a person. It's a conglomeration of people. Those people already pay taxes. The corporation has money that it's, that's piled up, right? And then like, it's got a value, and it's, got, uh, it's on the stock market, and it goes up, and it goes down. And, you know, and they're always kind of looking to improve their, their bottom line and universal constant growth. But it's not a person. But we, <clears throat> I feel like corporations have gotten rights like people yep. over the last 20 plus years. You're right. right. Yeah. They have. They've gotten rights in terms of how much they can donate to charities, to, uh, excuse me, political campaigns. Mm -hmm. And that used to be not the case. They used to have a limit. And now they are like an individual in which they can donate as much money as they want to political campaigns. And doesn't a corporation also act to defend itself, sort of like? Yes. Can you... Google yeah. that, make sure that's true, uh, that corporations, um, they can donate as much as they want to political campaigns now. I think this, I want to say this is like, <sighs> during the Obama administration. Fucking Obama. Obama. Jeez. Yeah, I think this was during the Obama administration. It's a disturbing one. That's a disturbing one to me, because that is a, that is a, that's a lot of influence. For someone like a Amazon, I don't think Amazon's evil. What's but the if limit? They wanted to be? I don't know. I mean, if the limit's like, oh, that's you know, max three thousand dollars. There's no limit. There I don't should know. Should be a limit. There should be a limit. Yeah, but I don't think there is. There has to be. Well, I don't know. How sad is it that I don't know? <laughs> I should know. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, see what we got I'm here. At, I've seen various things. The one I'm seeing right now is that an S-Corp can uh, deduct up to 50% of its adjusted gross income to be uh, as a qualified No, how much money can... No, there was a law passed. I know, I'm looking. It's not popping up. How much money... There was a, a law passed that stated how much money a corporation can donate to political campaigns. It was very specific that a corporation is seen as an individual. Why don't look up that? Corporation seen as individual for donation political campaigns. It was just, it's not in anybody's good, in anybody's interest that these huge companies like Amazon or anything that size that has fucking billions of dollars, that they should just be able to get together and influence a politician with a shit ton of money and then the politician does their bidding and it helps them be bigger and stronger and it maybe fucks over some people you gotta be really careful about that because the politicians could find a way of arguing it well i could see but would is that how he would vote without that influence no so all these politicians that get into those positions are all just influence peddlers they're just peddling influence they're saying, listen, you know, if you help me, I'll help you. Scratch my back, I scratch yours. They're not looking out for the people that voted them in at all. They're looking out for the people that paid all the money to make them more prominent so that people would vote them in. It's very sneaky. Like, it should have been fixed a long time ago. It's really, if you think of all the shit like insider trading that is illegal, like if, uh, if Jamie really did know something about Facebook and then uh, he told us, like, hey, dude, shit's going down. Get rid of all your Facebook stock right now. And you and I went crazy and got rid of it. 
we could get in trouble. That's like what Paul Ryan's in trouble for right now. Some bank thing he got supposedly was he sold a bunch of stock. Oh, so right someone now. told him and he yeah. bailed. Yeah. See that? How is that illegal? But it's not illegal to influence politicians and and have corporations spend shit tons of money and then obviously get preferential treatment and obviously get laws pushed. Here it is. Paul Ryan sold shares on same day as private briefing of banking crisis. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Whoops. That seems like a dumb move, dude. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> you got to take the hit, Smooth son. Move. No, you got to take the hit there, fellow. You can't do that. That's so, terrible. Somebody told me you better sell your Toys R Us stock right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. But this thing about this guy, like, when can he... Like tr trade those stocks. Yeah, I don't know how long you have to wait because that's what Martha Stewart got in trouble for too, right? She, well, she lied oh, about doing it. Yeah, like she that. got like a. They, they found a note that had like the information on or something. God damn, my memory is dog shit lately. Hey, just to work real quick on the tax thing. I think there is a limit, but then that's why super PACs became a thing. So you can donate to another organization that's not directly to them, and then that mm. come that group can give the money as they see oh. fit. But it's just a workaround, like a loophole. What's the? You know what the limit is though. It's tw I believe it's twenty seven hundred for an individual, and then there's like for a a, a company can give like up to ten thousand dollars or something. Like that. So it's twenty seven hundred for an individual. That's interesting. Per election, still a lot of money, but not as much money as you would think it would be, right? right. Like you would think it'd be like a million. Yeah. You know, like there's a bunch bunch of fucking wackadoos that would give a million. The thing is, man, there's weird things that happen with politicians that you don't factor in when you think about bribery. And one of the weird ones is, did you ever see that movie um, about the financial crisis? Uh, which one was it called? Mm, Wolf of Wall Inside Job. Inside Job. It's fucking amazing. But one of the things that it details is how many of these guys were professors that were making these uh, suggestions like working as uh, consultants to the government, making these suggestions that wind out to be horribly irresponsible financially. And then those guys get giant jobs afterwards that pay fucking millions of dollars. And you're like, wait a minute, what happened here? You're a professor. You made these sort of, you know, weird suggestions that if you looked at, like in the, in the movie Inside Job, he goes over it with these professors. Like, wh how the fuck could you have thought this? Why did you push this? Like, why were, you, why were you guys promoting that? And then they go on to get these gigantic fucking jobs at banks. And you're like, oh, this is crazy. This is like a clear path. Like, do the right thing here, and then you're going to make $5 million a year here. And so they all do it. And this movie's really good because in one of the scenes, he's talking to one of these big-time bank guys. And in the middle of talking to him, the guy realizes what's going on. And he gets a real hostile, but he keeps going. He, like, his arrogance allows him to like, keep battling this guy, but he keeps like, looking dumber and dumber. Because the guy who's doing the interview is really good. The guy who put together this documentary is really good. It's, an, it's a fascinating documentary that gives you a real insight into how complicated, complicated and fucking distorted the system is. Like, it's very distorted for those people that are just like those rich banker guys. All they're doing is moving money. Imagine having all that money, and what do you do? I eh, just put money over here, and I get it over, pick it up. Aren't you glad you're not doing that, though? <laughs> oh, I know. I don't understand it. <laughs>